Jamaica's crime monster, Can It Be Tame? Our exclusive interview with Mark Jamaica is, um, is unique, but it's not that unique. Okay. The reality is that criminals across the world are the same, yeah. whether they've got high-powered weapons or not. Coalition to Preserve Reggae presents Reggae Culture Salute 28. Discover Kingston, the Caribbean hot spot in Ireland. What was most popular? What people generally go towards or gravitate towards, also bringing new flair. The Marsh for Jamaica, Spring Summer 2019 Collection. You're watching Come Chat with me, a Caribbean lifestyle magazine, and I'm your host, Ziggy Bless. Welcome. You're watching Come Chat with me, and I'm your host, Ziggy Bless. And today I have the privilege of talking to Mr. Mark Shields, who was our former Deputy Commissioner of Police for our beautiful island, Jamaica. And of course, Mr. Shields is also this year guest speaker the at the CIN lecture series. So keep it locked. Mr. Shields, thank you very much for talking to me, sir. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine. Thank you very much for having me here. Jamaica's crime monster. Can it really be tamed? And if so, what are the strategies that one must implement to really solve the crime mm -hmm. in Jamaica? I think that things are starting to turn around anyway. I think that some of the initiatives by this government have been successful in that we can see there's a 20% reduction in homicide at the moment. Okay. Uh, but that's not going to be enough. Yes. We are going to need, in my view, um, a total transformation of the police force into a police service. Why do I say that? Because mm -hmm. the fact is, it's the thin blue line that stands at the front of crime. And if you don't get that right, then everything that goes with it is not going to go right as well. So that yeah. really is an important factor. Yeah. I think um, a political consensus is equally important. By that I mean, I don't like it if the PNP or the JLP right. start to score political points around crime. I think that's wrong. I think that that actually scores for the criminal. What we need to do is to ensure that government and opposition work together in a very unified fashion yeah. and say a crime, enough is enough, we're working together to solve it. I yes. think that's important. Right. And then the last thing is, um, in, in terms of just general disorder, um, a bit like New York, which I'll talk about tomorrow, okay. uh, the fact is that New York at one point, many years ago, was a dreadful place. It yeah. was full of people on drugs, there, were, there was lots of robberies, it wasn't safe to go on the subway, and you've seen this huge transformation in terms of society. And that's about various aspects, stakeholders coming together. Okay. And I, I think that could happen in Jamaica. The answer is, yes, yes it can, yes. can be, be tamed, tamed okay. but it's going to take some resources to do it and some big efforts. Well, I've seen a video clip of um, Dr. Peter Phillips, and he said, right here in quote, we are dealing with criminal enterprises and crime is big money. Do you agree? Absolutely. Um, it's huge money. If you just look at one aspect of crime in Jamaica, which is the lottery scam, which I expect you've heard of, it's yes. where they're phoning up unsuspected, vulnerable people, normally in the United States, and saying, hey, you've won the lottery, send me a, a deposit or the tax money first and it's released. Yes, yes. That is a multi-million dollar US business. Wow. And the proceeds of that within Jamaica have you know, built homes, people have got flashy cars. The proceeds of Crime Act is kicking into that. But the fact is, yes, it's a massive business. And then on top of that, yeah. Jamaica is seen as a transit country for drugs from South America into North America and across to Europe. And yeah. again, billions of dollars in that wow. industry. So yes, certainly crime yeah. pays uh, and many people are, are actually benefiting from it. How do you feel about getting international military help in Jamaica? I don't think we want the army there. We've got enough soldiers. I think we're doing we enough soldiers. the right thing. I think that we always need international help yeah. because the thing about crime fighting and crime, crime and disorder generally is that we all learn from each other. And that's the great thing about it because the problems actually around the world are the same. So we can look at Colombia. What mm. did they do there? What was successful? Yeah. What have they done in the UK? And again, go back to New York. What's okay. worked there and there? Because that's how it works. And I think it's a really good thing that you try to solve the problem 
by cherry picking ideas from other nations, what's worked okay. here and what's worked there. Jamaica is, um, is unique, but it's not that unique. Okay. The reality is that criminals across the world are the same, yeah. whether they've got high powered weapons or not, mm -hmm. but they can be tackled and you can get on top of crime. The state of emergency in Jamaica, you think it's really helping? The state of emergency? Absolutely. Right it's definitely Absolutely. helping. It's working. Yeah. Both the, the state of emergency yeah. and the zones of special operation Murder mm. is down significantly and people can go around their, 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 okay. their businesses, go to school, they can go to work without the fear of being extorted and intimidated. So yes, I think we've got the assemblance of normality for people who live in certain parts of Jamaica yeah. where constantly they're in fear from gangs and from firearms. Okay. And I think that at the moment we've got our first foothold, but it's the first of many. And yes. I would say that we need more ZOSOs, as they're called, Zones of Special Operation. Yes. I think the PM has mentioned there may, may be up to 20. Whether that's practical or even affordable, I don't know. But certainly, we need to have the visible face of the security forces in each zone, backed up by good social intervention in order that we can overcome the problems that we face. What specifically you think can be done in Jamaica to really put a, a, a dam a stoppage on this crime monster that is taking over our country right now? Well, that's a big ask, but certainly in terms of three points, certainly number one, we have to have a Jamaica Constabulary Force, a police service that's fit for purpose. Yes. That means an organisation that is beyond reproach, yes. that the people can have trust and confidence in, that can do their job yes. with the adequate resources that are required. That's number one. Yes. I think number two, we must have the legislation to support the Jamaican Constabulary Force and with that I mean we need a justice system where it doesn't take nine to ten years for someone to go for trial for a murder for example. Okay, nice. Yes. And thirdly I think that this um, political will, the necessity for both parties to come together and yes. work for a common cause which is to reduce crime. I think they're three most important things and I guess if there's a fourth it means that everybody has to play their part. Yes. There's this notion that it's about the police alone and it isn't. Exactly. Every yes. single person who lives in Jamaica, every organisation, public and private sector mm -hmm. must work together to a common goal which is to reduce crime and disorder in Jamaica. <laughs> I don't know a cigarettes and you don't know say a reggae culture salute. Yeah, that's the occasion. We're Milk River Brooklyn. Come chatting me with another oh, Ziggy Bless there. See? You don't know so the lineup is crazy. Janet Asburn, New Kingston, many more. Yo, keep it like right a son of man. Come chat with me. Boom. How are you doing tonight, sir? Well, I'm nice, you know. I'm nice. Regular Culture Salute 2018, I'm yeah. nice. I really think, man. I love that, man. I love that. I show up this nature tonight. I see the people are rolling in. The vibe is looking good so far and thing. What do you think so far? What do you think about the whole energy so far? No, the energy is good. It's good to see the people come out. We say dress um, um, uh, elegant yeah. and everyone is looking so elegant this evening. Yeah. You know, regal because it really is a royal occasion. We're celebrating the king. Emperor Hill Selassie, the first of Ethiopia, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, conquering lion of the tribe of Judea. It's the 88th anniversary of the coronation, yes, and it's good to see the energy of the people come out to celebrate the event and to catch the independent artists who will be representing here tonight. We've all been dancing for a long time and what Miss Sophia put together was a mashup of a bunch of Afro-diasporic dances that come from West Africa but we try to touch on different parts of the diaspora. Tonight it was Jamaica. Looking forward to tonight to see it. I really man, you don't see the people man rolling and thing you know. What type of energy them I get tonight? Them I get the full hundred still you know.
It's all about the preservation of the reggae and also what reggae represents, you know. It was created before you and I. It's gonna be here when we die. No matter why, the wind blows, nobody knows. You don't do a heads up already. What to expect? Tonight is the night, my brother. So the same thing that we expect are you changing now. Yo, it, it, it get hundred, it get hundred more. So that's what come out. Saying the people them there, the vibes right. Epic art in the building, yeah. you don't know a mad thing, you don't have to come in. See me? I remember you know, the epic, epic higher level. Mad. Music, when you feel, you, you not feel no pain, ah. and you say I, yeah. that's I exercise, dancing. All right. I love to dance, All right. you know see, because I that keep I young. I, I'm a 58 year old, nice, nice, nice. you know see, yeah. two more years I am 60. <laughs> We are so honored, we are so proud. We want to thank CPR for their vision because these young men have been musicians all their lives, essentially. And they continue to bring to us the pure, the raw, the rugged, the real reggae music. And so we thank them with the Simba Award this evening. Let's give them a round of applause. I love the energy, I love the vibes, man. All the man I'm saying, got to find a way. Got to find a way, Joshua, the way. Kingston Fireblaze. Kingston, a Jamaican and Caribbean restaurant and bar, is the only authentic Caribbean dining experience located in Harlem.
I decided to open Kingston in Harlem because I love my culture, I love my food, I love my people, and I was very nostalgic. I'm homesick. I miss all of my culture, my people, my food, and that was my inspiration. I wanted to bring all of that to Harlem, especially because we have no Caribbean restaurant and bar in Harlem, so I wanted to bring that. That was my inspiration for opening up Kingston in Harlem. I decided to choose the foods based on what I know was most popular, what people generally go towards or gravitate towards, also bringing new flares, new flavors, um, bringing different things on the menu that people aren't necessarily used to. So that's how I went about choosing the food items for the menu. The design of the restaurant is, it was like, it was just about bringing it home, you know, bringing it back to making as the minute you walk in, you feel like you're in the islands. The minute you walk in, you feel like you're in Jamaica. The blue is aqua, which is pretty much the beaches. The galvanized metal, which is what we call zinc. It's pretty much everywhere. Zinc is utilized a lot in the islands and the tropics for roof, for fences. It's utilized everywhere. So that was pretty easy to do. It's like pretty much bringing the feel of the islands to the space, doing it with the palm trees, the colors, the flags. So the design was pretty easy. It's just about me envisioning what it feels like to be in the islands and then bringing it to the space. Our rum punch is off the hook. It's Ray and Nephew and everybody loves it. Everybody loves our rum punch. It's the number one seller. We also have a house special on the menu, which is also another favorite. It's with sorrel rum ginger. Sorrel is the Christmas time specialty in Jamaica. So we also have that drink on the menu as well. There are other specialties on the menu. For example, jerk salmon, which is different unique and it's also new a lot of places don't have jerk salmon so that's different new and unique we have our ackee and saltfish with freshly fried banana chips um that's on the menu all the time every time it's like we pretty much have an ackee tree in the back of the restaurant so those are specialties on the menu as well so if you ever want to get away from the hustle and bustle of new york city kingston is here for you or if you just need a destination to relax have a good time, feel the island vibes. We're here, we do catering, we do birthday parties, private events, baby showers, corporate events. We're here for every part of it. We also have a live band on Thursdays. We have a live DJ on Fridays and Saturdays where we go up until 4 a.m. And then on Sundays, we have a steel pan band for brunch as well. When African Restaurant Week approached us, we thought it was only fitting to be a part of it as well. A lot of the Jamaican food and culture is significantly impacted by Africans. A lot of the items we use were brought to us from Africans back in the 1800s. For example, Aki is definitely from Africa. Sorrel, which is also another favorite in one of our cocktails is definitely from Africa. A bunch of African restaurants even use it. They call it Bisap. So a lot of our food, a lot of our culture is from Africa and hence we thought it was only perfect for us to pair with them because we're all the same thing. We all identify with them. We see ourselves as Jamaicans as being a part of them as well. So we thought it was only fitting to be a part of the restaurant week. Glenroy Marsh is a Jamaican-born, New York-based fashion designer who launched his brand, House of the Marsh, in spring 2003. The formation of House of the Marsh has given Marsh the opportunity to marry sophistication with fashion-forward sensibility. Inspired by the land of his birth, Jamaica, its magical attractions, beautiful beaches, breathtaking waterfalls, and scrumptious cuisine, Glenroy de Marsh presents his Spring Summer 2019 collection. Tonight is my spring 2019 collection and it's inspired by my homeland Jamaica. So the collection is all based on the waterfalls and the beaches in Jamaica that I love. 
a lot of people don't know on holidays like Easter, Monday, after Christmas, we all go to the beach. So that's where our family will bond. So yeah, I combine the fabric, the beaches that I love and created my own fabric. And then I combine the elements of Jamaica that I love, like the words one love, home of all rights, make it Jamaica again. Then I add the national flower, which is the lignum vitae and the aki and the hummingbird. So it's a swimsuit collection. I have a full lifestyle brand. So a lot of times people think that it's only the couture, but no, you can get a candle, you can get a bow tie, you can get a t-shirt. So you don't always have to have a $10,000 couture gown. We cater for everyone. My goal really is just to keep going because once I keep going and I can achieve anything, right? Yo, what's up, man? It's Lamb Legend already, man. We at the Dimash Couture Fashion Show. If you're not here, you really missing out, man. This is what we call a beautiful fashion show. It's idiosyncratic. It's new. It's polyphilo progenitive. Extremely prolific. If you're not here in New York City right now, ow, you missing out, y'all. Hey, hello everybody. My name is Isa Surago. I'm a lead designer for the brand Sobeys USA, and I'm here tonight to support my very good friend, the Marsh, uh, Glenn Roy. He's a great designer. He took me to the Caribbean. We've been working together, and uh, I'm enjoying his show. I'm having a wonderful time. Stay connected with Come Chat With Me. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for watching Come Chat With Me. Tune in each and every Sunday right here on CIN. See you next week. So your man never take you home, man never take you home, man never take you home last night. Yeah. Yeah.